building on what you're both talking about, and I'm not saying the Celtics won't get there, don't have time to get there, can't get there, any of that. I'm sure they will and can and should and blah, blah, blah. But with regard to Kemba, as Evan noted, you know, he's not playing back-to-backs all season. He's nowhere near even playing 35 minutes a game, let alone, you know, going up and over that. And He's not going to hit 30. Brad Brad said yesterday he's not going to hit 30 for another few weeks. Right. So it's going to be a while, obviously. And that's if everything stays on schedule. Do you worry about them getting to where they want to be sooner than later or all of that being elongated just the process of it because it's going to take time to ramp up isn't the right word but put Kemba with regard to a lack of restrictions where you want him to be I would be worried if Jalen Brown didn't look like Jalen Brown looks right now Mm. right like if if Jalen Brown was the Jalen Brown from two years ago or, or even last year and you know to his defense he has made it clear this season. He's like, I've been able to do this stuff. I haven't been asked to do this stuff. I'm just right. asked to do it this year. So in his defense, maybe it was in his bag last season, but we're finally seeing it. If he was playing with the same, um, you know, the same type of play on a nightly basis as last season, I would have some concerns because you need to have that second and third banana. And if Kemba wasn't going to be there until let's say April or, or something along those lines, late March, whatever, um, then you've got a problem, but I, I don't really see it, see it as an issue. I think he's going to hover around 30 minutes and that's not too far off of what he probably would average. Anyway, he would probably average 32, maybe 33. So if he's at 28 or 29, maybe 30 on a nightly basis, that's not that big of a deal, right? That's not that big of a difference. Now, if the Celtics go into a overtime or double overtime game, he's already used up. Okay. Then you've got to ride Jalen and Jason um, to, to the final buzzer, but I don't think it's that big of a problem. Again, defense is what they need to figure out. Kemba Walker is not a, a defensive cog for them, right? So he, he's an offensive guy. They've got to figure out the defense and, and most importantly, the interior of that defense. And, and that is going to rely heavily upon the big guys, Tice, Thompson, and Rob Williams. With Jalen. And Grant Williams. With Jalen, uh, and I'm I'm paraphrasing, well, maybe I'm quoting it directly, but I don't remember. So I'm paraphrasing something that uh, our guy, Jared Weiss, another friend of the program, tweeted out the other day, which I just thought was kind of funny and also true, which was, you know, boy, Jalen Brown has been shooting unsustainably well for a sustainable amount of time. <laughs> you know, he is now at this point in time, as we sit here, 52% from the field. 44% from three point range and 77% from the free throw line, which should not be ignored with regard to Jalen Brown, obviously where he was once upon a time, he's shooting very well going off of what you were just saying with, you know, him saying that this has always, you know, been something he could do, but wasn't asked to do. I, th- I think it's interesting, especially listening to some of these post game zoom conferences because anyone can dial into these people that wouldn't ordinarily be at games case in point last night you had rachel nichols who of course prominent nba reporter host who was in this post game zoom and asking jalen about these very things you know why basically did we not see this last year and he sort of said what you just said although you know while respectfully he's gotten because he's been asked about this now multiple times in recent weeks he's just because of how well he's playing and he's gotten a little defensive about it which you can understand because you know now it it went from almost seeming like a compliment to now he's sort of offended by it (laughs) that you know were you guys not taking me seriously I mean what is happening right now and so he is you know he had said last night I you know I I, there was no offseason I didn't even touch a ball for a month like I didn't work on anything so to speak I'm doing what I did last year plus having more of an opportunity so I'm doing more of it where I will take a you know a gripe with that and and you know I defer to you because you dive more into into tape than I do with uh with regard to all this stuff and often sit down with these players going over it at least Mm pre-pandemic you know the now it's all virtual yeah the the playmaking that we've seen from Jalen Brown this year. I'm sorry, Jalen was not there last year. Yeah. The, yeah. That, that was not there. And, and I don't want to, it would be crass for me to say the ability wasn't there because that just seems ridiculous, but you know, it's one thing to be shooting better and more efficiently on more attempts per game and having a larger role in the offense. That's different than playmaking. Why is it the playmaking that we are seeing this year and all those great passes that Evan noted earlier was not there in the past, but is there now? 
Yeah, th this is the exact same thing that went through my head last night when I heard that interaction with Rachel. And Rachel, you know, it's a good question. Like, you, you want to know why these things are happening now and they didn't happen in the past. From Jalen's perspective, it's because he wasn't asked to do those things. When I'm watching the games, like, I, I totally respect what he says. And, and I'm sure that maybe if he was in this role last year, maybe we would have seen this earlier. But that doesn't mean that he hasn't improved. Like, mm -hmm. Jalen Brown has gotten better at playmaking. He is seeing the floor better. The game is slowing down for him. There's no question about that. And that happens for every player as they get older and go year by year by year into their career, right? Like he's another year in. Yes, there was no off season. Yes, they were just playing in September. But that doesn't mean that when the next season starts, visually, you are not seeing the game at a higher level. And, and that to me is what's happening with Jalen. He's just seeing things that he, he wasn't seeing in the past, or he's seeing them just a little bit earlier to be able to make those plays for other guys um, and not four shots and be able to, to take the right angle to finish or be able to make that one extra dribble to be able to set up the teammate for the dish. Th these are the little things that are a part of his progression this season that, again, like, yes, as you said, the ability was there in the past, but we didn't see it all the time. And so that's what I think is just, he's just seeing the game at a higher level. He's thinking the game at a higher level and the game is slowing down for him because he's getting used to, and he is used to at this point, based upon the way he's playing, having the ball in his hands, the amount that it is. Yeah. It's, and it's all about role, right? And it's about you know, Hayward leaves and vacates this role. They didn't need Jalen to do those things last year because they already had too many guys. You know, it's like too many cooks sort of thing. You have too many guys trying to handle the basketball. You know, nobody gets in real rhythm here. I mean, Gordon Hayward last year was tremendous at being a facilitator, still is. Um, but, you know, when he leaves the team, there's an opportunity for someone to step up. And obviously Jalen has taken that by the reins. But Mark's absolutely right. It's about him being comfortable on the floor. And he doesn't look like he's in a rush anymore to get to things and, and to, to see things and to process things. You know, it's, it's more about, and the one thing I like about Jalen is, is how he hunts for his spots on the floor. He knows where he's most comfortable. He's obviously super comfortable as a mid range jump shooter right now, because he's owning that particular portion of the court and what's happening. He's the is, league leader right now. Yeah. Of, of all players, all players that are taking at least two shots in the mid range per game. He's far and away the leader in, in field goal percentage right now. And what's happening is, is he gets into the paint and gets to where he needs to be. He's noticing and reacting to what the defense does to him. You know, he commands more attention now. And what that allows is for other people to get open just for a split second. And Jalen, give him credit, instead of forcing it up and trying to score all the time, he's just taking what the defense is giving him and finding guys that are open and credit guys that are knocking down shots. I mean, I thought it was ridiculous. You know, I, a friend of mine had told me earlier in the year, that like, oh, Jalen's going to average five assists this year. And I was like, that's hysterical. Like, I, I don't know. Jalen's never going to average five assists this year. Well, every game he, he gets pretty darn close. And he's in that three, four. If I had five assists last night against yeah. San Antonio, I mean, he's right there. And it's just about him being comfortable and, it's, you know, in seeing everything that he needs to see and, and, and reacting to what the defense does. He's not forcing anything. He happens to be a good shooter. He happens to know how to get guys in position and take advantage of them. And he's just making the most of his opportunities right now. And it's, it's, it's tremendous because, you know, between him and, you know, Jason, Jalen's a guy that tends to make his, you know, leap in the off season, so to speak. And Tatum is a guy usually that makes it while the season's happening. And what you're seeing here is, you know, with Jalen is a guy who was put in serious work every off season. And we all jokingly kind of, you know, attribute it to his grandfather who has, you know, obviously done some work with him in terms of conditioning and the boxing workouts that we saw with him were just tremendous, but you know, it's a credit to Jalen taking his, you know, responsibility seriously, like diving into tape, you know, working on dribbling, you know, I mean, I, you go back to his rookie year, he was a mess with, with either hand. Now he's confident with both hands. Um, he's just, whatever he's weak at, he takes some time to address it. And the one thing that you can say about him is you know that whatever off time that he has or whatever downtime, and this was something that people criticized him for when he was first drafted. Like, it's just, does he really love basketball? Is he too smart for his own good? Well, here we are in year five here. We all know exactly what, what Jalen Brown's priorities are. And basketball is very, 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 very high on the list. And the Celtics are very fortunate, as we've all said throughout this entire you know uh, podcast so far, 
that he has taken the leap that he has because without it, they're in serious trouble because, you know, they're, they're they don't have, you know, a 25, 26 per game score. And that's to have that plus the playmaking opportunities is ridiculous. Plus he's a good defender. I mean, you know, we all get mad at him for some things, but he's also a, a really good on ball defender. So, you know, Jalen is deserving of all the praise. Here's the crazy thing about Jalen is that like, Last year, you saw in the middle, you referenced it with Jason Tatum, in the middle of the season, he started, when teams started trapping him and triple teaming him and whatnot, he started to learn what to do in those situations. These first, this first month of the season is the first time Jalen Brown has ever been put in this role in the NBA. And he's already playing at this level. He's only going to get better. Like as, as he continues to play in these situations, teams continue to send a double team at him or, or a trap, whatever it may be. Brad Stevens always says, Oh, they've, they've thrown the whole, uh, the kitchen sink at him in terms of Tatum, in terms of everything you could do to defend him has been done. So he's seen it and he recognizes it. Jalen Brown is going to get to that point this season. And then he's going to get even better because he's going to learn about what to do in those different situations. So it's crazy to me that he is where he is right now, averaging 27 points and, about four assists per game, shooting the way that he's shooting, making plays for others. And this is really the first month that he's ever been in this role. Like, he's only going to get better, and that's a scary, scary thing to think about. He might not shoot at this level, but in terms of the way that he's reading the defense and whatnot, it's only going to get better going forward.